What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC update to bring all of you this afternoon. So what we're going to be covering in this video is an update on a lot of these really large institutions calling for a major market correction. And a lot of these corrections, what they're projecting is that these could start in Q4 of 2021. Now, we've gone over how this is going to affect AMC a lot in my previous videos. But again, we're going to touch upon this and make sure everybody understands the implications of everything that we're explaining in this video. So Morgan Stanley has come out and basically said, yeah, we think that the market is way overcooked right now. We think that the, the overall sell-offs are going to be coming soon. And this is in line with exactly what Goldman Sachs has said in their Q2 earnings report. And in addition to this, we're going to go over some of the reasons why AMC is falling, uh, falling today. And this really important article that I brought up a couple of times, it is called The Anatomy of a Short Attack, and it gives us a lot of insight into all of the manipulative tactics that the hedge funds or the overleveraged institutions are using in order to manipulate the share price of AMC lower. So before we get into all of that information, if you enjoy the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to. To learn. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So at the current time that I'm recording, AMC is down about 6.25% on the day. Now we are seeing a lot of options activity. There are a lot of calls in and out of the money and puts in and out of the money as well. This goes right in line with what we were talking about last week on how uh, sold puts are actually delta hedged by shorting the underlying stock, which can push the share price even lower. Now, when we come over to Ortex, the short interest change on the day, we have a 1.31% increase. The utilization has dropped significantly, um, but the shares on loan have only taken about an 8 million uh, share hit. So what I'm suspecting here is that a lot of these institutions, the prime brokerage operations, uh, they're finding more shares to lend out, which is messing with our utilization once it gets reported. Now, we are seeing some glitches right here with Ortax at the current time. But again, these are normal. We see these a lot and it's nothing to really freak out about. Now, let's get into this Morgan Stanley situation. So when we come over to this article right here, shout out to Zero Hedge for compiling all of these really in-depth articles um, and comments from people who actually work at these institutions. And this analyst goes on to say that the market market is the weakest we've ever witnessed. Two weeks ago, when stocks suffered a modest air pocket, we pointed out something ominous. Market breadth has been collapsing similar to what we observed last summer when a handful of market generals did all the heavy lifting. And as the Bloomberg uh, chart showed, market breadth has recently gone from bad to abysmal with the number of S&P 500 stocks above their 50 DMA at just about 50%, a very tiny increase from the 47% on June 29th when the S&P hit its first of many consecutive all-time high days. And while stocks have since managed to recover from their wobble earlier this week when the S&P dipped 3.5% from all-time highs in two sessions, banks are starting to play close attention to the composition of gains in issuing warnings of their own and none more than Morgan Stanley. So we are seeing Goldman Sachs do this as well as Morgan Stanley. Now this analyst warns if our narrative and framework are correct, price to earnings ratios uh, should start to fall sharply over the next few months, bringing the index closer to our year end target of 3,900. Now, here is what this means. We know that a lot of the institutions are wildly over leveraged at the current time. This is the key trend that you need to keep a lookout for. Over leverage is the key word. When we see a lot of sell offs in other names that are not really related to AMC or GameStop, what happens is, is that a lot of these institutions whether it be hedge funds or these big banks that have equity positions and they are over leveraged as well, they have to come up with more collateral in order to maintain those positions. If they cannot, they have to sell off those positions. Now, what this does is it drains liquidity from a lot of these institutions, which is good for us. If the liquidity can get down to a certain level where they can't gain enough capital or collateral in order uh, to actually put up and execute these trades and keep these positions, we're, we could potentially see a wave of forced liquidations coming in the near future. Now, what happened with Goldman Sachs, uh, we're going to bring up this article really quickly, but essentially what they said down here 
is that Goldman Sachs sold about 25% of their equity portfolio and dumped essentially all of these positions onto retail investors. We've also shown in one of my previous videos that the retail sentiment um, that the, there's a little uh, like a chart that Goldman Sachs puts out on the Bloomberg terminals that tracks overall retail sentiment in the market that went from a high at the end of June and it has significantly decreased. So retail investors are starting to get a little worried about the coming corrections in the market and they are no longer buying overall in the broad market in the large scale fashion that they were doing before. It's going to be a lot harder for these institutions to get out of these positions if retail is not the one supply them with the bids. Now let's get into this anatomy of a short attack article so we can get a better understanding of exactly what these institutions do. So we can see typical tactics include the following, flooding the offer side of the board. Essentially what they're doing here is they're manipulating the laws of supply and demand and flooding the, the offer side with counterfeit shares. And they can do this through the short laddering process. But one of the most interesting aspects of this article that I really want to bring up to you guys, it brings up the process of naked or synthetic shorting and the fact that there could potentially be a wild amount of synthetic shares out in the market. Now, I know a lot of you guys do not like Seeking Alpha, and I kind of ripped them a new one in one of my live streams the other night, but what you have to be able to do is kind of differentiate between the FUD articles that are being put out and the articles that are actually useful to us. So right here, Global Links Corporation is an example of how wholesale counterfeiting of shares will decimate a company's stock price. Global Links is a company that provides computer services to the real estate in industry. By early 2005, their stock price had dropped to a fraction of a cent. At that point, an investor purchased all of the issued and outstanding shares. He immediately took delivery of these shares and filed the appropriate forms. Total investment, $5,205 with a wildly low share price. Here's where this gets very interesting. What you need to keep in mind is that this investor, Robert Simpson, at the current time in this story, owns every single share that should possibly exist. So what happened the following day, the volume on the over-the-counter market was 37 million shares. The following day saw 22 million shares change hands, all without Simpson trading a single share. Now, what we've looked at a lot in the OTC transparency data uh, that is released by FINRA that basically is reporting Citadel Connects uh, data, that there is a really high amount of volume occurring on these over-the-counter exchanges that aren't necessarily dark pools. Now, we don't necessarily know if these are shorts, manipul uh, manipulative stock trades, but what we do know is that the volume on these over-the-counter uh, exchanges most likely should be not as high as we are seeing them be. Now, when we move over to Stonko Tracker, this is actually a really good resource to figure out how many options are in the money, out of the money at the current time for both calls and puts. When we look at the calls that are in the money right now, there's been a significant decrease, but the puts, there's been a significant increase. So here's kind of the dynamic that we are working with on the option chain for AMC right now. So when the stock starts to go up, we see delta hedging on the call side, which leads to more buying volume. But what people fail to mention sometimes is that they unhedge the puts. Now, in order to delta hedge a put that you sell, um, so what happens when you buy a contract is most likely you're, you're buying it from a market maker or an institution who is trying to basically play with the casino um, because most options contracts expire worthless. So they are selling them to you. But in order to hedge that position, if you are selling a put, you actually need to go out and short the stock. So when the stock starts to go up, you may not necessarily need all of those short positions anymore to cover a lot of these contracts. So when we see the stock start to move to the upside, they not only are buying back shares, um, to cover those short-term puts that are used for hedging, but they're also buying shares in order to cover the calls that they sold as well. This works the exact opposite way when the stock starts to go down. They start selling the shares that they needed in order to cover the calls, and they short even more in order to delta hedge all of these puts that are running really close to or near the money. That is why we can see these massive uptrends in AMC or we can see these steep downtrends due to the option chain. Now, I know a lot of people are kind of putting this out there that you should not be trading options right now. Options are helping out uh, generate liquidity for a lot of these institutions or market makers. But what I would like to say to that is one, do whatever you would like with your money, especially um, 
in this situation. Nobody is able to tell you what to do with their money, but what I would say as a word of caution is that options are incredibly risky, and I would not personally, this is just for me, trade with an amount that I am not willing to lose. So if you are perfectly fine losing a set amount of money, basically gambling on options, go for it. It is your own right to do so but you do have to be aware of a lot of these risks. So that is going to conclude this update on AMC. If you enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks learn about a couple of new ones, and see exactly which options I am trading and which strategies I am using to trade them. So I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.